years to come to work. Quit! <laughs> you want me to quit, but you also want me to work for the community that I'm in. Hold on, look at all I don't have a shot. Do you see I'm in Thorn Town still? Like, I'm scared to go to work! Quit! I'm scared! I don't have to go to work! I'm going to work every day! unanswered question in a lot of our minds is what is the reason why individuals like this stand up for known corrupt politicians regardless of the evidence that is presented that clearly shows that they are in the wrong well i'm about to show you exactly why from a psychological standpoint so let's Go political. Welcome back to the Go Political channel. I am Carlton Flowers, your host, and today we're going to go there. We're going to answer a question that has not been answered, and there hasn't been much discussion as far as what I can tell about why people would continue to stand up for Mayor Tiffany Henyard, even though all of the evidence points to the fact that she is a blatant, blatantly corrupt politician who does not have the citizens that she rules over. She does not have their best interest in mind. Well, this can be easily explained with psychology. So I'm going to break down about nine points that will make it clear to you what's going on in the minds of these people that still stand up for this ridiculous dictator of a leader <laughs> who clearly is out of control in her spending and in thinking that she is above the law. I'll be looking forward to hearing your comments about these points and I want you to let me know which one sticks out in your mind the most? Post it in the comments and we're going to have a great discussion. All right, let's jump straight into it. Number one. The number one reason is cognitive dissonance. Now, what is cognitive dissonance? Let me give you a definition. This is the discomfort that a person feels when their behavior does not align with their values or beliefs. Cognitive dissonance is a psychological phenomenon that occurs when a person holds two contradictory beliefs at the same time. Okay, so people tend to rationalize their choices and their beliefs to reduce cognitive dissonance. So when you're faced with evidence that contradicts the support that you have for a clearly corrupt politician, well, you're going to downplay it or ignore it to maintain consistency with your existing views. 
Now, in the case of our lovely mayor, Tiffany Henyard, <laughs> the residents who initially supported her may find it challenging to admit that they were wrong and change their stance. Cognitive dissonance. Number two, how about this one? Identity and group affiliation. So citizens often identify with political parties, Democrats versus Republicans, leaders, or local communities. Now, supporting a corrupt politician becomes intertwined with their self-identity and their group affiliation. Self-identity. Think about that. When the affiliation makes you identify who you are, it's intertwined with that political party or the group. Hmm. Residents who strongly identify with Mayor Henyard's party or community may prioritize loyalty over evidence of corruption. Why? Well, I think it is due to the fact that it gives them a sense of empowerment. They're living their life vicariously through the eyes of their dictator leader. <laughs> Some of the citizens who don't reign over anyone or are not in a position of authority in their jobs, maybe they don't even have a job. But when they live their life vicariously through the dictator that is in charge over them, they feel a sense of empowerment and control. Hmm. Number three, social norms and conformity. So people conform to social norms within their communities, and if supporting a corrupt politician is <clears throat> normalized or accepted within the group, here it is right here. Individuals may hesitate to challenge the norm, and it becomes harder for them to challenge it over time. Fear of Social isolation or backlash can discourage those residents from openly opposing the mayor. Think back to high school or junior high school and the cliques. How much do cliques affect people who have low self-esteem when they're in their formative years? I don't even need to explain that one. You know where I'm going there. Number four, emotional bonds and trust. Emotional bonds with politicians can be powerful. Residents who have positive feelings towards Mayor Henyard, perhaps due to personal interactions or shared values, may struggle to accept negative information about her. So trust in a leader can even persist when faced with evidence of wrongdoing, especially if that trust was built over time. Now, here's the key right here. I want you to really focus in on this. When you are in your emotions, your brain's center for logic and reason are short-circuited. The caveman brain, that's the primitive brain, will override your cerebral cortex. That's the part of the brain that is responsible for logic and reason. Now, what's that got to do with this situation? Well, I'll tell you. A dictator will use these as a control tactic. They use things like love bombing, I love y'all and ain't nothing y'all can do about it. <laughs> they use that also beratement and threats, shaming to keep people in their emotions so they don't have the ability to use logic or reason. Hmm. How about this one? Number five, we have the cognitive, or I'm sorry, the confirmation bias. This is a good one. 
So people will seek information that concerns or confirms their existing beliefs. It is hard to unroot the belief systems that are placed within individuals because they are set at a very young age. So the residents who support Mayor Henyard may actively seek out or interpret evidence in a way that aligns with their preconceptions. All right? So they might dismiss contrary evidence as biased. Oh, it's just biased. That's all. They're just biased. Or it's just a part of a conspiracy, a grand conspiracy against their leader who makes them feel empowered. Hmm. All right, number six. This is a good one. And I see this one in action during the meetings. In fact, there was a gentleman who used this one. I believe it was the connect, the D-O-T-T-S. <laughs> All right. So number six is fear of change and uncertainty. This is very powerful. So change in leadership can be very unsettling. Residents may fear instability or uncertainty if Mayor Henyard steps down or faces legal consequences that lead up to her removal. <clears throat> so the status quo, even if it's flawed, can be more predictable and comfortable because it is human nature to resist change. We don't like the unknown. We want to stay right here in the comfort of what we know. That's why people will stay in abusive relationships in marriages. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Now, one good way that you can think about this one is plantation mentality. Don't fight the massa. It's a lot safer here on the plantation because life sure is a lot harder out there. We don't know how we would survive. Think back to the gentleman who spoke about what would happen if they got a mayor similar to the one in Calumet. Well, anything bad could happen. So y'all don't know how good you have it. You just better stay safe right here. Do you remember that gentleman who spoke? I don't think it was the D-O-T-T-S gentleman. It was the other guy that spoke earlier in the Thornton Township meeting. Number seven, perceived benefits and costs. You know where this one is going. So supporters of the mayor will weigh the perceived benefits of their corrupt politician against the cost. If they believe that Mayor Henyard's policies or actions will benefit them personally, they might tolerate the corruption. And it might not be direct payments because we can tell who's on the payroll, but it might be they appreciate the investment into local events. You know, there are certain things that she has brought that are positive to the community, reaching out and helping the people who need help with their rent or help with their food. You know how she yammers on about, we feed people, we pay people's rent. Y'all get a lot of free help and support from the Thornton Township. We like to help those who are in need. Well, the fear of those benefits going away will underscore their continued support. Number eight, we got two more to go. <clears throat> Psychological resistance. When people perceive threats to their freedom of choices, they react defensively. All right? Accusations against Mary Henyard might trigger psychological resistance, causing the residents to rally behind her. So they may view the legal actions as an attack on their right to support their chosen leader. Number nine, the last one, hope and optimism. Keep hope alive. We've got to keep hope alive. <laughs> Some residents might hold on to the hope that Mayor Henyard will improve or change. Maybe she'll have a change of heart. So this optimism bias 
leads them to believe that things will get better despite all of the hideous evidence to the contrary. So they might see her as a symbol of local pride or progress, thus overlooking their flaws. Let's think about it. She's the first single black parent, single parent, female, okay, to hold the office of mayor. And they're going to fight for that hope that electing her was the right thing to do. There may be people who are also single black female parents and they are living their life vicariously through the eyes of the mayor because it gives them a sense of empowerment because there is someone similar to her that is in power. So that gives them hope and causes them to focus on the positives. Now, I'd like to ask you the question, which one of these psychological factors do you think is at play in the most powerful way? Which factors have a stronghold over these people who continuously come up to the microphone in the town hall meetings reading prepared scripts or screaming and yelling like crazy people in support of of the mayor. I'd love to hear your opinion. Post it in the comments below. And last but certainly not least, I would love to get a shout out to all of my great commenters in the comments section. I really, really appreciate you all. But I do want to give a small handful of shout outs for certain people in the comments. There are a lot, but let me just give you these six. First, we have Luther, 6702. We've got Gabriella Cruella, Sandra Worley, Leslie B., my daughter, Sydney Flowers, and last but very not least, De La Creme De La. I want to thank you all for participating in the comment section and having such thoughtful, meaningful discord. I also thank you for the encouraging words. You guys have really encouraged me, and that gives me the gas that I need in the tank to keep on doing this. And a special thank you for De La Creme De La for sharing my videos. She has a much bigger platform and audience than I do, and it's because of her why a couple of my videos nearly went viral. So thank you so much for sharing out my content. I want everybody to like, comment, and subscribe to the Go Political channel. Share it. Get the word out and stay tuned. I've got so much more great information coming your way. This is Carlton Flowers and I am out.